Hello, welcome to the Curious Crow podcast, episode two. With myself, Martin Willingham. And me, Chris Borden. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, our second week, uh, we're, you know, settling into the groove now. We've had a bit of feedback on the last one, and we're excited to get some more. So leave in the comments below if you're on SoundCloud or YouTube, uh, or if you listen to us on iTunes, find us on SoundCloud or YouTube <laughs> and do it that way. Please got, leave your comments. Yeah, <laughs> we've got plenty to talk about today. Uh, earlier on today, went and saw Baby Driver, so we're going to be talking about that. Lego Batman, which I watched. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, chirpsing. Yeah, and I do. What, if, you're what, sat, if you're sat there looking very confused at Martin's use of the word <laughs> chirpsing, I had no idea what it was. I other said chirpsing. The other day chirpsing, old chaps. <laughs> uh, more broadband coming to the UK. More. More is more. Over 9,000. Uh, lottery winners that won us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the New Gorillas album. Woo! Bi- bicycles and how no one gives a flying... Fudge. Fudge about your Facebook photos. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be talking about that. But first of all, I want to talk about the SNES Mini. Ooh. Have you seen this? I, I've heard little bits and pieces about it, but I've not heard anything particularly specific. Okay, so I don't know if you're familiar, but they did the NES Mini. The NES Classic Edition is what it was called. And they did that last year. I do remember. And it was wildly successful. So, of course, Nintendo had a shortage. Oh. <laughs> um, but, yeah, wildly successful. It was a little box. came with 30 games. Cool. And you loaded them onto your little system, and you had 30 games. HDMI output, sort of original kind of controller. Not really original, but original controller. And very successful. Wildly, hugely successful. Um, people have been modding them as well, which is pretty oh, funny. Oh, good but lord. they have announced they're doing a SNES Classic oh. Mini. Edition. Oh. Uh, I'm looking on the Trusted Reviews dot com site and they say after the NES Classic Mini proved to be incredibly popular although Nintendo decided to discontinue it shame that's a very good point many people have hoped for news of a miniature version of the 16 bit great the SNES now Nintendo has confirmed it will be launching a retro control for the second year running um, so there are lots of games on this okay. uh, shall I run you down the list yeah please do because okay. obviously last week we had um, our list of new release games that were coming out from E3 uh, and if you haven't heard about that check out our podcast from last week podcast um, on pilot pilot that's the one <laughs> uh but yeah no give me a rundown of the game list okay contra 3 the alien wars good game donkey kong country earthbound fantasy uh, final fantasy 3 again we all know that's that's good f-zero needs to be another f-zero game kirby superstar kirby's dream course legend of zelda a link to the past mega man x secret of mana star fox star fox 2 which I'll get back to in a bit. Called Star Wing over here for some bullshit reason. Street Fighter 2 Turbo, as if there's not enough copies of Street Fighter 2 Turbo in this world. Super Castlevania 4, Ghosts and Ghouls, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario RPG. Nice to see that there. Super Mario World, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, Super Metroid, and Super Punch Out. Lots of supers in there. That's, um, yeah, no, to be fair, that's a fairly nice list. It is. Um, that, oh, obviously, with uh, Nintendo's mainstay playing a rather vital role there, it seems. I always yes. feel like a, a sports lot of, commentator. A lot of first-party games. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. A lot of first-party. Uh, with the exception of, like, Contra, mm. Final Fantasy, Mega Man X, Secret of Mana, Castlevania, Goose and Ghouls, Ghouls, sorry, Ghouls and Ghosts, and Street Fighter, they're all first-party. I need to talk about Star Fox 2. Yeah. Star Fox 2 is a game... They did the original Star Fox, or Star Wing, as it was called over here, and then they called the sequel Lilac Wars, which I've never understood. Okay. Uh, it's something to do with Star Wars. Larry Bundy Jr., if you're into that, does a video on that. It's recent. It's very interesting and worth a read. I think it's called Five Reasons... Five Games That Were Changed, Named for Stupid Reasons, something like that. Street. Uh, sorry, Star Fox 2. So they did the first Star Fox, Star Wing, over here. Okay. Very successful. Very successful. Wildly successful. So obviously, Argonaut, the company working on it, immediately make a sequel like there's no okay. hesitation they just straight away make a sequel nintendo then pull it because apparently the official reason was because they wanted to make a differentiation between 16-bit 3d and new 3d so this game was never released oh someone got a bit pissed off and put it online oh. so you can play star fox 2 illegitimately this will be the first time it's been available legally wow okay and it's made it a big deal. So if you essentially if you haven't played Star Fox two, 
then this is a whole new experience for it. And it's legal. If you if you're and it's bit, legal, yeah. yeah. If you're a bit funny about emulation and stealing off the internet, then this is the time for you to play it on an official, a real Nintendo console. An actual platform, which an is lovely. Platform. Rex, I know you're not massively into the retro stuff. Um, I don't mind it. I think it's because, obviously, when, for me, when gaming kind of really kicked in for me, it was obviously the PlayStation 1. So I don't yeah. actually remember many other games before that, and I've I've always been used to the whole, well, the, I suppose the current day format for controllers and stuff, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, because I've never been uh, I've never been one for PC gaming either. Um, but some of these titles that I, I, I'd quite like to have got, I mean, like uh, the Legend of Zelda, a Link. To the to past, the past yeah. which actually coincidentally is quite nice considering they're bringing out a retro console. I like that. Yes. It's a n- n- nice little touch. Um, and obviously with Zelda Breath of the Wild having been brought out recently. Masterpiece. I don't still have it. <laughs> I, 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 I can I can imagine that being quite... Uh, the, the brand power alone is probably booming. Zelda is hot right now. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yes. Um, and I think it's really interesting. I just hope they don't do the same thing they did with the NES, which was like... Okay, that's out there. It's done very well over Christmas, and forget you don't forget as well for Nintendo. It was a sort of very dry Christmas. There wasn't much, you know, going on at Christmas time uh, for Nintendo last year. They didn't need this this year. The Switch has done no. well. The 2DS and 3DS continues to do well with the 2DS XL coming out next week. Oh, I've got one coming. Don't know why. Of course why. you do. Got of enough course of them. you do. I know. Berate me all you want. But I I've will. got one coming. Oh, I've God, got, I will. I've got it in the blue and black. Of course I have. Mate, every, almost everything you own is either blue or black. Listen, if they give me an option to have a colour, blue is my favourite colour. What colour do you think I'm going to go for? I personally think you should go for black. No, black yeah, and orange. I don't want black and black orange. Or, black always looks smart. Black and orange. Black and orange is a really, like, really sporty thing. It's like a Lamborghini. <laughs> like a Lamborghini. Like a Lamborghini. I don't know why we went Welsh <laughs> there. Or, Oh, I tell you, like a Lamborghini. Don't don't berate <laughs> me if you're from Wales, please. Um, berate him, please. Berate, berate, Just find berate. him on Facebook, berate him as much as you like. But yeah, so mini snares. Who knew? So you may have seen a gap, a little gap or a little breath thing. We recorded an extra 20 minutes on top of that. 20 minutes. And it didn't record it. So uh, we're going to have to do it all again. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Um, well, I'll tell you what we did talk about. <laughs> where, 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 where did we end off? So, <laughs> some of that was like a quite an organic discussion. Yeah, some of we it was. We didn't even talk about the pub yet. No. We didn't even we talk not? about anything yet. Oh, is that how far back we are? Okay. Uh, <laughs> how? So, so I don't know what happened. Audition just was like, nah, mate. It, deci- stop, it decided man. to have a fart. We haven't even talked about chirpsing. All of that conversation gone, lost. To the gods of computers. Oh, Lord in heaven above. Oh, my God. <sighs> okay, fine. We'll try and reconstruct our natural sounding conversation, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we talked about the SNES Mini. Wonderful. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, oh. what is chirpsing? Chirpsing. And why am I old as shit? That is the what is written on the guide. Um... <laughs> Deja vu here. Chirpsing. I would love to turn around to you and do what I did earlier and go, hey, Martin, guess what? I don't actually remember because I was sozzled at the pub when I heard it. But you do remember but now because I do remember I told you. Because you've already told me. Um, this is bullshit. <laughs> uh, basically, chirpsing apparently is flirting. And as you said earlier, what in God's name is wrong with the word flirting? Yeah, why? I don't know. Why, did it, why, 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 is it had, why does it have an almost like an add-on? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't need it. Doesn't it? So basically, we were discussing about how how this word came along because your friend Gemma said it at the pub, and I yeah. was like, "What? What the heck is chirpsing? Yeah, and what actually is that? Like, apparently, it's flirting. Apparently, it, 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 whether that's the entire definition or not, I'm not sure. And, I, and, I, and my point to all this is, am I now old as shit, mate? You've always been old as shit. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, that's not true. That's not true. I think, you know, I, I can use different slang. Bants. Tug to maze. <sighs> Mate. But the thing for us was lol, wasn't it? Oh, the thing for us was lol, because that that, that, that encompassed so many emotions you, you and would so say, many things. You'd say lol without even raising a pissing smile. Lol. It's lol. I found that so funny. Ruffle, and you just... 
<laughs> sat there. Ruffle. Ruffle. <laughs> You're not laughing. That's not even cracking a smile, my friend. No. It's a, do you know what? I, I, I'll tell you what the modern day, in quotations, equivalent is to going lol or ruffle copter is sending the laughing crying emoji because a lot of the time you're not yes. laughing and you're not crying at the same time no but you you said because uh you know you just yeah it's weird isn't it i found it so overly funny that i'm actually crying with laughter ha 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 believe me i am human believe me um <laughs> so, yeah and uh, weird uh and also we talked about emoji there's a video about tom scott about emoji and how it came to be indeed we also talked about this feels like a the, recap the, of everything it? the poor audience are there going well, obviously, we didn't hear any of it, dickheads. Yeah, exactly, and there's, they, they are probably sat there going, "Why? Why do we even bother?" A clicking bunch on of it? losers who can't even have a machine that deals with audition properly. This is <laughs> Apple screaming again. This is for last week. Actually, <laughs> <the> last week. <laughs> this gives me a chance to mention this. So, <laughs> the podcast is now available on the Apple Podcast Store, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Okay, it'll be uploaded every Thursday. Uh, the last one actually went up Monday. Okay, so every Thursday this will come up. This um, episode that was our pilot episode though. So this that was a pilot kind episode. of excusable. See, we haven't, you know, it's amazing we found stuff to talk about since then, isn't it? So, um, yeah. So, um, we did, I uploaded the podcast and I didn't know how the Apple Podcast verification process worked. Turns out someone listened to it. So someone from Apple listened to me cussing the <laughs> iPad <laughs> so hard. They listened to me just like <laughs> slating slating Apple, I and th- it got approved. I th- I think uh, it's either someone who really hates their job or I someone who's just gone, eh, it's all right. I they're don't not think us too badly. Yeah, I don't think they're the content but police. To I be think they're fair, just making sure it is what you say it is, <laughs> like the thought police from 1984. Um, <laughs> to be fair though, I think because I, if I recall, because I actually listened to the podcast last night, if I recall correctly, you turned around and said. They're actual bastards, and I they're think not, they're not bastards. <laughs> Just so to I clarify, think, I think you have cursed people at Apple are not bastards. I, I think you've cursed your 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 luck with Apple now, mate. Next, the next thing you know, Apple's, your Mac, I'm going to ring them up, and they're going to go, "Oh yeah, do you need support? <laughs> do you? Do you? <laughs> and uh, you, your, nice. your phone's going to explode. Your uh, it's not Mac, a Samsung Note, is it? Uh, your Mac's going to mysteriously crack itself in half. Well, it's mysteriously stopped recording on Adobe Audition. Maybe well, that's Adobe hating me now. Don't uh, you start on me, Adobe. <laughs> the, the gods of creation. Um, I'm running CS6. <laughs> and he's still great to CC. We need to force him. Uh, Carry conspiracy. On. <laughs> Bermuda Triangle. Anyway, chirps in. So, yeah. It's like words like bants. Yeah. And bants. totes. And totes my goats. In it. In it. Yeah. In it. In it, mate. We used to use the word in it a lot when Ali G was at its, <laughs> at its peak. Height. Um, but also, we, t- we <laughs> so we talked about how I'm just old as shit now. I used to work at a college. And the minute I popped on that blue lanyard, yep. I was instantly working with 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 year olds, 21 years old, years old in some cases, even higher. I was instantly like old and uncle. It was instant. There was no, honestly, I could have been wearing the coolest T-shirt. I could have been down with the kids. And the second I started working there, old and uncool. So yeah, I was in the <laughs> office once with my colleagues. And uh, they walked in and they went, oh, can I have an SD card? I went, totes. And they looked at me like I'd just got my knob out. <laughs> and just whacked it on the desk. They just looked at me like, they were so disgusted. And then just peed in their cereal. Yeah, they were so disgusted that someone as old and uncool as me could use a word like totes. Well, if it helps, mate, at least you're not the older sibling where the younger sibling is embarrassed of how behind in the fads and the memes you are. Because Our I, 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 strong. At one at one point I dabbed. Auto dabbed. Auto dab. I dabbed in front of my little sister who looked at me with vile and revulsion and went, oh my God, Chris, you're so uncool, and left the room. That is how bad, that is how behind in things. Like, mate, I'm two years younger than you. If you're older shit, I must be getting there as well. Because honestly, I think I think the new, if you're 25 and old, that makes 23, like, 50 old. Yeah. So old and uncool. I don't know, I don't know as well, like, there's no way to fix that. I don't really care. You know what? I don't care. I don't care about these kids and their dank memes, <laughs> although I'm into a bit of memeage. Do, you know, uh, do you know what? Do, uh, at every point 
in every week. I think we're just going to have a segment that goes, Martin's rant. Yeah. Begin. And let you rant. Apple last week, now chirps. No, it doesn't know. People people using terms and like bastardizing the English language doesn't upset me. Okay? It, it actually doesn't. What upsets me is like... Is that your old uncle? Old uncle. Uh, I wish I wasn't. And here's the thing as well. I was... And I won't reveal too much about my job. But I was at work... And I, I'll say I'm a television director. Okay, that's I'll leave it there. At work, and a presenter when I said something funny, she went, "Ha, huh, banter." <laughs> now this lovely lady, she's in her forties. I think I actually wanted to crawl inside my own ass. <laughs> I think I actually wanted to just be like, "No, no." To be honest, mate, no. if you were, did manage to do that, no one would be surprised. Hey, um, uh, and it, but I know exactly what I'm you not mean. Not of your talent level, my d- friend. D- d- <laughs> But do you remember? I I was I said this before already. But my mum, my mum, my mum is in her fifties. Yeah, bless her, lovely woman. Love my mum. However, it was about four years ago, and I said, "All right, you know, I'm going up to my room." And mum went, "Oh, what what are you going to be doing?" I said, "Just chilling, mum." And she went, "Ah, oh, you're going to cotch," and I went, "You what?" <laughs> I just looked at her and went. Why would you use that filthy word? What does it even mean? Did, oh. you, did you think it was like, like dogging? No, I, honestly, <laughs> I, I, I thought it was something sinister. I was like, mother, what are you, what are you insinuating? And then she went, you know, coaching, relaxing. I was like, I've never heard that phrase before. And then when I went up north, it was everywhere. It was it everywhere. Is, it, it was like an STD thing. It was it like is. an STD. It followed me everywhere. <laughs> Just like the ones you currently have. Indeed, apparently. <laughs> Not like I'm bleeding out the anus, Martin. <laughs> this has gone down a very different avenue of conversation. Chirpsy, Chris, ladies and Chris just looked at me like, what the... F- what are you talking about, you dickhead? It was a look that made me wish we had webcams. <laughs> um, oh, man. It's staying in, though. But so, of course it's staying in. I can't be bothered to edit it to that extent. I've, uh, you know, <laughs> we, I've just lost 20, 20 minutes bloody of minutes, programming. Yeah. Anyway, chirpsing, ladies and gentlemen, the definition of flirting, apparently. Yeah. Um, it, well, that's chirpsing. the definition of it. She's um, chirpsing. He's chirpsing. chirpsing. <sighs> Kids these days. Do you know what? <laughs> Again, I, I'm. 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 You know how I talked about old man Nintendo earlier, you know, being, yes. being in his rocking chair, tripping kids up with his uh, walking stick going, <laughs> <laughs> I've decided I'm actually one of those old men that's going to be driving a mobility scooter to run kids over with. And as and, and Lawnmower, and, my friend. And, and as I go, oh, mate, mulching would be fantastic, wouldn't it? And I just start... <laughs> <laughs> Motion. That's and a different story. <laughs> Indeed. Um, and then, uh, do you know, what? I, I can see it now because I just go boom, <laughs> speed bump, and carry on because I, I I'm already at oh, that age and I'm uh, and I'm 23. Like the amount. Actually, that's that's something shocking as well. I did turn around to my sister at one point. Well, oh, kids these days. What 23? I'm not old. What's wrong with me? <sighs> Makes you feel old, though. Mm, doesn't it just? I feel well old. Yeah. It was the lanyard. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's what chirpsing means. Also, we were at the pub, right? <laughs> and Chris was talking about how he has no shame because you, you hadn't seen your friend in a long time. Yeah, about f- five years. Yeah, and you were talking about, you know, oh, you know, I have no shame anymore. And the most amazing thing that could have happened happened. They were, th- there was there was a gentleman sat on the table behind us with three female friends. Yeah, yeah. And they, were, and they were sat there. They were having yeah. a good laugh and everything, and all of a sudden, from betwixt the silence, came the loudest, wettest <laughs> fart I have ever heard of <laughs> in my twenty-three years of living on this planet. It was a good one. It just came from it, it <laughs> and it's like, what? And obviously, it, the, the comic timing was perfect because I just said, "I have no shame," and that happened. It was like it was instantaneous. You couldn't have timed it better. It happened again. Yep, Audacity today hates us. You've you've Fuck cursed it. us. You've cursed us. The gods of Audacity disc- are disgusting with us. But yeah, as I was saying, it's <laughs> lucky it's, you caught it this time. Yeah, exactly. Now, Twenty minutes hasn't gone by. Um, yeah, it couldn't. The, the timing could not have been better. No, it really couldn't have. It was like it was. If you'd been writing a comedy, it wouldn't. You couldn't get timing that perfect. We were just sat there crying, clapping, 
And, uh, and he turns around and he goes, oh, I was trying to be discreet. Didn't work. <laughs> it did not. Didn't work, mate. Just because your backside is pressed against a hard wooden slab does not mean that we will not hear the sound or feel the vibration from betwixt thy thighs. If you're going to fart. It's, it's, yeah. It's just one of those things. You're going to hear it. Exactly, and, and is is I think it's the fact that he did it in such good stead as well, and he he, just, he as as we he said, owned he it owned like it. a champ. Of course he did. And uh, what was it I said to you on the night? I said I really wish I had some extra money. I'd, I'd buy him another pint. I'd buy him a beer. <laughs> I'd buy him a beer. I would have. Um, let's carry on before it stops. Audition again. Audition stops again. Uh, more broadband. More band. So the government is spending four hundred million. 400 million are making broadband speeds up to one gigabit a second. Now, oh. this is a really boring story. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of all like, oh, that's why we're about investing 400 million pounds in infrastructure. It's a weird situation where the government, and they don't always do this, are thinking ahead. Nice. They are looking ahead into the future, and they're seeing that whilst 35 meg a second or whatever is fine for now it might not be that way in say 10 years exactly and but the thing about this podcast or crowcast as we like to call it yes um is politics will never feature on this show no they're keeping a politics free zone they're banned however this is something good this is something very good. We can talk about this. It's fine. Exactly. No one's going to argue with this. Exactly. And, I mean, you know, the amount of people that I can turn around to and go, oh, so, faster internet, what do you think? And they'll be like, oh, brilliant. Yeah, everyone needs to get Pornhub <laughs> in 4K. Pornhub in 4K. That's what we need. <laughs> but, yeah. No. Or if you're a very lucky boy, Snapchat. Snapchat. Um, <laughs> but that's the thing as well. With faster internet. 4K Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> with a faster internet it means you'd be, able, you'd be able to listen to us even quicker that's right um, I mean we could even it's all about you. 192k mp3 Exa- oh mp3 quality d- d- dying dying format we were saying the other day it is a dying format yeah unfortunately but yeah so lots of money being invested in broadband no bad thing we're okay with that definitely we are absolutely okay with that so we're going to talk about something else now uh let's move on to the lottery indeed because this this do you know what this discussion started with me and our, our mutual friend hannah knobs it's a fantasy thought that you have regular i'd have it regularly regularly i fantasize about winning the lottery isn't it and you, you can't sit there you, and if anyone turns there and says oh, i would hate to win the lottery they're lying um, because yeah, they're lying, <laughs> lying sods. <laughs> Don't um, trust them; they're lying, most likely. Yeah, but this is the thing because it started off with a conversation with me and Hannah, and I just turned to her and said, "I'll ask you the same question, actually. What would be the first thing you would buy if you won the lottery?" Well, and I'm not talking like a couple mil, or you know, a hundred thousand, or a few hundred thousand, whatever. Yeah, I'm talking. A huge sum, like last weekend's, which was eighty-seven million. Eighty-seven million five hundred seventy thousand, oh. to be precise. Oh lord! I've always said this. I would go down to the shop, local news agents, buy a pint of milk, and a loaf of bread. So when people ask, "What was the first thing you bought with your millions?" you can say, "A pint of milk, a loaf of bread, maybe a paper. Maybe I'd buy a newspaper. Maybe I'd buy a copy of." Hang on, wait a minute, you read? Something. I can. Oh, wow. I just don't like to. <laughs> I don't read so good. Dyslexic. It's all right, I don't. I, I done England so good, so you're all right. There's a, lot of disle- there's a lot of rivalry in the dyslexic camp. Rivalry with three Vs. It's, a, it's an old joke from Idiot's Art, oh, but I like it. Lord and heaven above. Anyway, so yeah, we discovered, we decided what we'd do, okay? And um, I, I've said that, obviously, you'd sort your fam out. Yep, another word to add to the list. Mm. <laughs> you have chirps in. You'd sort your family out, right? Obviously, yes. you'd sort your friends out. But here's my stipulation. Okay, so for you example, you know, your student debt, you're a student. I'd pay off your student debt. I'd um, you know, oh, cheers, get mate. you a bike or whatever, and give you a bit of money and say, push off, bike, off you. Yes, push bike, <laughs> bicycle. <laughs> get on your bike, you lazy <laughs> shit. Um, I'd I'd do that, right? I'd, I'd I'd you know get you a motorcycle, pay for your CVT, and like give you some money. That's probably okay. what I'd do. So, and I'll probably end up employing you at some point because I think I'd expand Curious Crow. Anyway, this all said, um, why was I going with this? Yeah, my stipulation would be this: I give you this money, but you never, ever ask me for more 
which Ever. is fair. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's why you keep your friends, you know. When you go to the pub, you still split the bill. When yeah. you get around of drinks in, you get around of drinks in, you know. Just make sure that all my friends are comfortable with that one rule. And of yeah. course, we're not dickheads. No. We'd give money to charity, but it would be with, from my perspective, that same stipulation. Oh, yeah. Would be exactly the same deal. I give you this money over X amount of months, or I give it to you in one lump. You don't ask me ever, ever again. Yeah. Well, this is the thing, because we were also saying, weren't we, that, you know, money, that uh, such a large sum of money would potentially change the way that people are, because it's happened before. You know, yeah. pe- people people do change depending on the money sometimes. Depends on their person, depends on their character. Not saying it happens to everyone, but it's yeah. a possibility. However, if you were to turn around to me and say, Chris, I paid off your student debt, here's a new motorbike, I'm paying for your CBT as well. Oh, by the way, there's also a little something in your bank account for you just to keep you safe. You're and never going to have to worry. Yeah. If you turned around to me and went, said that, I'd go, right. I went, oh, you know, thanks, mate. Cheers. That's amazing. How much did you get in total? And you'd, tell, you'd probably tell me or you'd say, you know. Enough. Enough. Exactly. You'd, go, you'd, you'd be like, it's a fair You'd probably look at the Euromillions results of the week before and go, <sighs> oh, yeah, I know how much he won. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then do you know what I'd do? I'd turn around and go, Oh mate, that's awesome. Shall we go for a pint? Yeah. Because I think in the in that way. No, fine, it's still so we're so we're just, just double checking. We're just checking auditions we're now. Bo- we're both so skittish you know, about it just, now. Just for a second, I will mention I think it's because this week I'm recording directly onto a hard drive. Oh, uh, okay. That could be that it. That could be why. We'll do some experiments next yeah. time. Oh yes, we will. Hopefully it won't die. If it does die again, no, we'll we'll be honest about yeah. it. We'll tell you and we'll say no, we're we're carrying on. Yeah. But all this bit the, the, where, from now on, I can I think yeah. we can safely say we haven't gone through before. Yeah, we are uh, we very 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 organic content. This is where um, it becomes all natural yeah. again. Um, but yeah, I I do I do honestly think that you know if because if for instance if I were to get that amount of money, careful, there's a piano behind. <laughs> there is a piano. Sorry, piano the, behind you. this is another distraction. The sun is shining through the window and it is making me have a thin layer of perspiration. It's boiling in here that so i thought i'd move back to get out of the way of the sun and you just go just straight smashed into my piano oh well, the man. old piano the old piano because he's got a new hey, talk about what you now. do for the right. i'm gonna i'm gonna have to open a window in here that's absolutely fine. boiling but you know i because obviously as as martin said before you know I, I personally if it were me i would uh probably pay off any debts that i have student or otherwise um i would give a huge lump sum to my mum and dad I'd probably put some aside for my little sister as well because she's at the age of fifteen slash sixteen tomorrow. Yeah. As of tomorrow, she's I'm de- back. By the way, she, she's uh, she's decided what she wants to do with her life, which is a patisserie chef. She wants to open up her own bakery. Nice. Which is awesome, and I'll probably fund that to be honest with you. And then I'd go right. I'd look at the rest, and I'd go, hmm. Huh, do you know what I'm gonna do? Cut it right down the middle. Half of it I put away. The other half, I'd keep out to, you know, do my CBT, get a motorbike, get a flat. Buy a house or whatever you want to do. Yeah. Exactly. Do, do those kinds of things. But at the same time, as we said in the car earlier, I'd probably go on the biggest fat-off holiday I That's could. That's what I said. Be like, right, I'll see you all in a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am out of here. Exactly. And you're coming with me. <laughs> because, well, do you know what? This is the thing. Because obviously we, we said this as well. There's there's this whole stigma behind it, isn't it? That, you know, yeah. people make all that money. They're going to go and do really stupid things. They might, they might go and do something really stupid with it. Yeah. But I think the majority of people have enough common sense that they turn around and go, right, okay. Get, d- because of how everything's going for them at the moment, maybe. Yeah. They go... I could really do with saving that money. I'm um, going to put some of it away, but I'm g- not going to stop enjoying myself. I also reckon Camelot, the people who do the lottery, yes, Camelot, are almost certainly going to have people there to help you, to support yeah. you. Consultant. I know it sounds weird, like, oh, millionaire, what sort of problems are you going to have? But you're going to have this massive... Imagine looking at your bank account. Like, I've got um, a, a, a bank balance thing, and it, it's, like a, it's part of the app, but I can literally look at it, it'll tell me my balance straight away. So, with that said, can you imagine looking at that and seeing the the nine? Oh, sorry, it's eight digits for eighty five million five hundred and seventy thousand. It's lottery tax free. It's the, oh, no, I have to Google that. Oh, but yeah, Lord. can you imagine looking at that? Yeah, do you know what? It would make your head spin. I know it would for me. And obviously, I think it comes back to the whole thing of you know 
huge lumps of money will change people. And maybe, yeah, some a few aspects of someone's personality might change or they might change completely. It's, you know, to each individual kind of thing. But <clears throat> for me personally, I think... I, I w- I'd like to think that I wouldn't let it change me too much. Might make my way of living better. Yeah. But that's all, as far as I can see, that's all it would do. HM Review and Customs doesn't regard your lottery winnings as income, so all prices are tax free. Hooray. However, there oh. could be tax implications once you've banked your winnings. The cash will form part of your estate and they'll be liable to a 40% inheritance tax. And gifting millions <laughs> will not save you money. Either. You'll still have to pay it. Now, I'm going to be totally upfront and honest, as I promised to be. Oh, okay. It cut out again. <laughs> now, we need to look into this issue because this is going to be a problem for me if this carries on with this shit. So, yeah, luckily, though, it paused in the middle of a sentence. Yeah. Handy. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, uh, I've put the link in the description. Yep. As I said, you can look at that yourself if you're a lottery winner. As I kind of allude to, if you do win the lottery, we're probably the worst two people you could come to. Oh, what do you think I should do with this money? Well, personally, give I think you should me, give please. it to us. Yeah. But do avoid that inheritance tax. Uh, no, don't avoid... No. Ooh, ooh. Ah, no, no. I do not. <laughs> I have to legally clear myself here. I am not offering financial advice. I am not offering any financial solution. Do not listen to me. Get a solicitor. Done. There you go. We're clearing ourselves. It's the UK media law part of me that has to say, don't come to us. We are not financial advisors. We never will be. Well, never have. I think. I think any legal advice do not come to us. Agreed. That's Legally, very sound. Don't. We're terrible. Anyway, so yeah, that's that's what we'd do if we won the lottery. But if oh, if you're on YouTube or SoundCloud and you want to leave a comment letting us know exactly what you guys would do, we'd love to hear it because it, it's a good good conversation. I would buy a Ferrari California T. Ah, <sighs> that's the convertible Ferrari. I'd have a collection of cars because I like cars. We're going to be talking about cars in film very, very soon. Yes, we will be. So, uh, but speaking of films, I watched Lego Batman. It's out of the cellophane. Woo! Yay! I watched it last night with Frank Me. Uh, not last night. A couple of nights back with Frank Me. She uh, liked it. it. Well, uh, that's the thing. If if people listening don't know, Frank Me or Frankie is, uh, Frank is, 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 is Martin's love. Frank Moo. Stinky. I call her all sorts of names. Sausage Cat. Some of them she probably isn't too happy about, and if it were me, I'd probably belt you for work. She tolerates me. I don't know why. <laughs> don't we all? Uh, uh, she's <laughs> great. She uh, puts up with me, and I, I understand how anyone could do that. Even I get annoyed with myself. But yeah, Lego Batman watched it with her. She liked it as well, and she doesn't really... She's not really into films so much. No. And she used to say, oh, it's because I have a... Small, pre- like a uh, what's it called? Small attention small span. Small attention span. Uh, but then she watched like all of the Orange Is the New Black season five in like two days. So I was like, <laughs> "That's hokum. That's a load of rubbish. Don't give me that junk ever again." But, but yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah uh, it's it's a really good film. It's it's a. F- I'm going to give it a four star right here. Out of five. Out of five. Yeah, we always okay. do things out of five, don't we? Um, yeah, I guess it's really good. I think it's one of those films that. It's not as broad in its reach as the Lego movie. True. But if you like the Lego movie and you liked Will Arnett, which I do, um, who voices Batman, really good. Really good. It's funny. It's fu- I would say it's also funny if you're not into it. Frankie has no knowledge of the DC universe. She has no knowledge of Batman, really, other than what Batman. the common or garden person. Yeah, well, the common or garden person would know. And she liked it. She found it funny, charming, and doing Ray. Uh, so Reynolds Fiennes is really good in it. Um, well, Arnett is really good in it. Everyone's really good in it. It's really good. Michael Serra's in it as well. Did you oh, know? Is it? I didn't know yeah, that. He's, no. he's Robin. Uh, well worth watching, though. Definitely. Well worth watching. There's some little jokes for the adults. It's like it's like Shrek. Yeah. Shrek was one of the first films to really do that. Just throw in just a couple of little gags for the adults that just go <laughs> straight over the kids' heads. And even when the adults do laugh, then they'll be like, ha. And then the kids will start laughing and they go, ha, ah, what is it we're laughing at? I don't understand it. Yes. Just before we go on to speak about the thing, because we've, we've, we've not long come back from the cinema. Yes, true. Before we speak about that, um, how about this? Crash Bandicoot Trilogy. I'm so excited. Isn't it cellophane? It's sat over there, look. 
I was so back excited. Back in the replacement place of Batman. Haven't had a chance to play it yet. It was only released on yet. Friday. Yet, Martin. Yet, we need to play it. I've been at work all weekend. Haven't had a chance to play it. I'll probably pop it in tonight if I get time. Yes. Uh, maybe that's Every a game day. that Frank Moo could play. Uh, so, yeah, but I'm looking forward to that. I haven't heard anything about it yet, and I'm going to keep this free. I'll give you my own opinion probably next. Definitely. Um, also... Uh, the Gorillas' new album. This yes. is this is a Chris thing. This yes, is this is a this is red a underlined, <laughs> red underlined, red underlined. Is it stuff Martin doesn't really want, but I want in, so he's gonna have to deal with it. Well, my stuff's uh, underlined. So, is, is that, oh, blue's my favourite colour. It's available. Um, I'll take it in blue. Like, it's this interface. It's all the interface is red because oh, yes. it doesn't have a blue one available. Oh, thank God. So, <laughs> a little bit different colour. Um, Man, anyway, yeah, no, the Gorillas, the Gorillas. The Gorillas. I absolutely love the Gorillas. Um, have done ever since Demon Days. And obviously that was I think that was a third album. Feel good. Yeah, and they you know they they have a really iconic sound as well, which is lovely. Yeah, they have a really nice little gimmick, which is the the band is animated, they're drawn. Yeah. Um, you know because cause, oh, yeah, I just love it. I I love them so much. I love the fact that the characters, the animated characters themselves, have their own personalities. I love the fact that you know their music is, you know that it's got storylines and things like that. I really do love it. Um. But yeah, they've re- released the newest album, Humans, uh, is which that with is with a Z. With a Z, yeah, because you know gorillas. Uh, um, but yeah, no, I love it. I've I've downloaded the album recently, and I adore it. My favorite two at the moment, if you get a chance to listen to them, are Sat- Saturn's Bars. Yes, the video to that's quite trippy. Okay, I love it. And the other one is Moments. Okay, and it's they're both really good songs, fantastic songs. Haven't had a chance here, but I will. Yes, well, I'm gonna make you later. <laughs> um, you won't have a choice. <laughs> um, Help me! Oh, he's making me listen to it again. Um, I just like tape you to your chair and make, hit put it on repeat. Um, put it on repeat. On on uh, repeat. Re- okay, repeat. The way you say repeat is very strange. Repeat, repeat. You like split it up. Repeat. Oh well, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry that no, I'm not saying know, it's wrong. That 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 the way I it's talk is such me. a problem for you. Cause See, I just said it's not offending me. And you're like, Ee-hee. you know, because I I I totes God, sound different to ex. you. Um, I, anyway, I'm totes different. But yeah, the Gorillas album. If you get a chance to listen to it, download it or anything, do it. It's a phenomenal do album. It. Do it. Do it. I knew it, Stuart. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, come do, my apprentice. Do that. Uh, Gorillas album. What would you give it out of five? Out of five. Probably a four. Ooh, a four. It's great. I love it. However, I do like the older stuff more. All right. Well, there you go. Verdict from Chris. Well, worth listening to then. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't mean you. I meant the album. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <sighs> Couldn't have myself. Anyway, uh, now let's very quickly talk about... Well, I say very quickly. We're going to spend ages on this. Let's talk about Baby Driver. Yes. Edgar Wright. Baby Driver. Oh, yes. We went and saw it today in the cinema. We're literally fresh back from it. And now we can't promise anything because we might say something that might be considered a spoiler. But we are saying that we're not going to spoil the film for you. We're going to try our best not to. Go and look at the trailers for yourself. Go and make your own educated decision. But needless to say, and I think it's fair for us to open with this, we liked it. Very much so. We like Edgar Wright anyway. Oh, yeah. We, we love Edgar Wright as director simply because I think he worked on the Cornetto trilogy. Yes. One of the greatest trilogies of all time. Very much so. Obviously, if you don't know what the Cornetto trilogy is, it is Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and At World's End. So you looked at me like, and I was like, oh, right, I better say. Um, Scratching your chin with your microphone. Now, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I've got the beard's coming back. It's getting a bit itchy. Um, so, um, if you like Edgar Wright, you will like this film. There's, I, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure of it. If you like Edgar Wright's work, if you're into the three films we just mentioned, or you like Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Amazing film. It's a great film. You are going to like this film. There's lots of clever little visual things going on. Now, we could, I, well, I could, I'm sure you probably could to accept media theory the balls off of this. Oh, yeah. But we're not going to. No, we're really not. Because, you know, it's kind of boring, isn't it? So, I will say this. It's visually very clever. The story is typically Edgar Wright it takes you in one direction then pulls you in another in a way that you don't expect it's not a stereotype it's not an archetype it's different from anything you've seen before uh, unless of course you count the other Edgar Wright stuff it's got very clever music the soundtrack's amazing oh, the soundtrack is phenomenal you know how people reacted to Guardians of the Galaxy soundtracks this, this is, is exactly the same thing for me 
personally. Yeah, the soundtrack is amazing. Fe- featuring a Queen track you wouldn't expect. Yes. Um, Kevin yes. Space is in it. He's great. Jamie Foxx is in it. He's great. Um, the can't remember the guy who played the played Baby. Ah, oh, he's really good too. Um, and the story, the trailers. Whoever's been involved with making these trailers, has done a really good job oh, God, of yeah. not giving much away. Because the story goes, if you watch trailers, the story for a while goes in the direction you'd expect it to. Yes. And then it veers off a little bit. Not in a bad way, because sometimes you can go into a film thinking it's going to be something different and then it's bad. This is probably a little bit different to what you expect, but then again, remember who's directing it. Definitely. Remember who's written it. Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright's written, written directed this. Remember that. If you remember that, you'll be absolutely fine. One of the other things it. about this film, though, is and that we were talking about on the car on the way home, because we were just chatting about it, mm. um, had... 17 was it 17 by edge of 17 edge of 17 stevie nicks uh lovely song um we were talking saying this car drivers will probably most likely enjoy this film or car enthusiasts at least would appreciate some of the elements to this film all i'll say is there's a bit where he turns off an airbag and you see that switch getting clicked that's all i'll say about i'm not gonna put it in context because that would then but it's details. They didn't have to shoot that. It's on for like less than a second of this. Just click. But you spot it. And car people will be very happy. The choice of cars that are used in this film is brilliant. Yes. It's not all new and shiny. But there is a bit of new and shiny. But there's, you know, I can't talk about everything in it. I'm no. Stay away from that. But the choices of cars are excellent. Very much so. Um, the, the way they're integrated into the story makes them... Kind of, you ever watch a Fast and Furious from the car? It's kind of all about the cars and the the, the overblown, over the top action. This is a more subtle. The stunt driving is excellent. There's the character is kind of fallible, but the character is also a hero. But he's not. It's got a lot of dimensions, yeah. and I can't say more than that. Well, what what was his name? Jamie Fox. Jamie Fox. Uh, from an actor's point of view, let's put it this way: Jamie Fox does does a fantastic job. Of making you hate him, he does. The only way you'll know this though is if you go and see the film. Um, Kevin Spacey, great, fantastic actor. Um, it's it's, uh, it's a <coughs> Kevin Spacey. Film. Yeah, oh, very very much so. Like it's not like it's not like he's doing something as bad as it may sound. It's not like he's doing something brand new. That's fine. But that is fine because he is that kind of actor, and that's actually something I identify with myself because I've never been very good at playing the whole Prince Charming role kind of thing. Instead, I've always been very good as the villain. I don't know if I like to say something, I'm very, very good at the villain or the comic counterpart. But is he the thing. villain? Mm. No. Um, <coughs> is he? Is, is he, he not? Is he not? Uh, uh, Go uh. see it. It's out in cinemas now. I will say, it's out in cinemas now. Go and see it. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to maybe push on with it too much because I think I know where we're both going with this, and I yeah. don't want to spoil it. But you got anything last last thing to say? But it definitely isn't a spoiler. Last thing. Oh, okay. Um, oh, oh, now you've asked. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, that's something for me that we didn't actually discuss in the car. Is so there are some songs in the soundtrack that will really strike a chord with some people because mm. it did for me. There were songs in there that made me go, huh. Now all I want to do is go and actually pass my drive and test and drive a car like a maniac, like a getaway driver for a heist. And yeah. that's and it they 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 they've done it really really cleverly. Something that I said to you wasn't it? Because they've used original songs, original covers, and they've also used cover covers. Cover covers, yeah. It, and and the choice of music is almost certainly Edgar Wright. Oh, very much so. Almost certainly. The last thing I'll say about it, I'll give it a score. Are you brave enough to give it a score? I am, yes. 4.5 out of 5 for me. I'd give it a 4. That's going up on the DVD box, isn't it? Oh, uh, <laughs> Curious Great Podcast, 4.4 or 4.5 or it's actually f- between this, 4.25. <laughs> 4. <laughs> 4.25 stars. It's nearly perfect. And if you're a, uh, a, a, a media theorist like I am, a nerdy, nerdy bugger, you'll love this. And if you're just someone who enjoys sitting there watching films, you'll, you'll love it. I, yeah. I can guarantee, from my point of view anyway. You can analyse it from any angle if you want. And oh, it's definitely. Great. It's great. I, I think it's one of the best films I've seen this year. Oh. It's up there with Guardians too. Big claim. Oh, big claim. Oh, it's. I think it's maybe potentially even, a, from my perspective, a little better than Guardians too. That's a, that's a huge claim. Yeah. We, we, we won't, as I said, go see it in the cinema. Leave your comments what you thought. Don't spoil it for anyone else please or we will find you and we will have to have a severe english talking with you we'll have a stern we'll send you a stern, stern letter, letter. <laughs> anyway 
Stuff that isn't Baby Driver. <laughs> How's about this? There's incredible photos on the Metro website. Photos are great for a podcast. Oh, yeah. A graveyard of 84,000 dumped bicycles. It looks like a magic eye picture, but what? if you look closer, you can make out thousands and thousands of frames. Around 84,000 bicycles have been left here in the field in Hingzhou in China's eastern Xinjiang province. Now, I've probably butchered that if you're Chinese. Sorry, please do Probably. feel free to phonetically uh, explain it for me. They belong to a bike sharing business which which are growing in popularity in China but have been abandoned. Similar to the Boris bike scheme, people can ride off with the bikes the first hour is free and are assigned to dock them in the city's 2,700. But they've all just been left in this field to sort of like rot so lazy cyclists have often just dump the bikes when they no longer need them and the companies have been slow to come pick them up as well leaving them to arrive welcome to another abrupt cut <laughs> i need to get this issue it, sorted it, it, it keeps happening and we have no idea well we we have a vague idea i think idea. i know why but uh, we've started like this so we kind of have to carry on like this definitely so we're really sorry for the patchy podcast that you're getting this week hopefully we've made it as less intrusive as possible now we were talking about these bikes it's amazing to me that they're so cheap the, the police just round these things up and leave them in a field. Yeah, it's insane, isn't it? It's so, like, cheap. But, yeah, a bicycle mm. to buy, it would cost £100, like, minimum yeah. for a brand new one from, like, Halfords or any other reputable retailer, so just a Cathalon. Uh, lots of places sell bikes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's baffling it's to standing. me. What was it you said? I don't know if this was on it, but you said, like, a flower bed. Yeah, because, uh, obviously, I forgot what we were talking about. We, yeah, I, f- I forgot what we were talking about. Um, yeah. on what story we were doing, and then when the picture came up, it was it it looks like a flower bed. Yeah, because there's lots of different coloured bicycles. They're all very very f- you know pretty colours and yeah, pinks and yellows and blues. But yeah, so the, the this podcast we haven't talked about games much no. this week, and that's fine. We're not really going to to be honest with you. Well, we aren't going to talk about games. Of course, we are. It's a big part of our lives. But this is going to be about everything. Yeah, because this is episode two. I think by the time episode three comes around, we're not going to mention any of this stuff. No, you're just going to assume it. Um, anyway, exactly. let's. But we're not going to be sticking to a particular subject every single week. I mean, no, you know, it's uh, for the for the instance this week. It's been films, music, bikes, um, and things like that. And it's you know, obviously, we have mentioned gaming at the very beginning. However, it's not the be all and end all of this because obviously, like our YouTube channel, it's not going to be. Purely games, right? Not yeah. Gonna be purely gameplay. No, it's going to be multiple different things. I mean, for instance, our sound, ca- our SoundCloud account. We were talking about this earlier because I really enjoyed doing a module at university where I had to do a children's book. Yeah. I gave it to my mum to listen to. My mum is a childminder. She played it for her kids at lunchtime, and they really enjoyed it. They had no idea it was me. And also, you know, I'd like to, because of what I did, you know, like my trade, I'd like to go do some radio docs, definitely, um, on different things. Particularly gaming, I've got an idea for one, but uh, oh. yeah. Anyway, do you post your pictures on Facebook, Chris? Your holly photos? Yeah, no, I do, do you know what? I don't take, you know, well, I haven't been on holiday in a long time, <laughs> so I haven't had any pictures to add up of where I am on my holiday. Right, well, I, I tend not to do it, because I'm chronically aware that people don't really care. I mean, I do, obviously. You had know, a couple of photos. Yeah, of course you do. You put up a couple of little ones for you. For your family, but I, t- I tend to avoid it. Let's have a look at this story that's in the Metro this week. Sorry to break it to you, but you're doing everyone a massive favour this summer. If you keep your holidays of f- uh, holiday photos of Facebook, that means no pre night out selfies, no pictures of cocktails, and definitely no soppy posts referring to your travel companion as this one. <laughs> sure, your mum will want to see them, and you can happily show your best mate, but it'll annoy most of your Facebook friends. In fact, 73% of people said they got wound up when they saw other people's holiday snaps online, according to Aviva, who carried out the research. And according to the study, the most unpopular post is snapping a picture of your legs on the beach and asking, hot dogs or legs? Now, I have a particular problem with that one. I don't like it. I think it's horrible. I don't care what your feet look like. Feet are kind of gross. And this is from the man who has <laughs> size 14 feet. My big toe is as big as like most people's As thumbs. big as my head. It's bigger than most people's thumbs. It's bigger than my head. <laughs> you should see it. It's right. It's <laughs> that is a challenge, my um, friend. <coughs> oh, <laughs> brutal. No, I, I understand where you're coming from. However, the whole thing of, you know, uh, pre, pre-night out selfies and pictures of cocktails, that, that kind of stuff doesn't bother me too much, if I'm honest. Right. That kind of stuff does not bother me. Um, the hashtag this one photos don't really bother me either, but they're st- c- kind of funny. As, as bad as that sounds, why do you, you know, find them funny? Because I, I'm, I'm happy that people have relationships. I'm people. I'm happy that you know, happy. people, people, pe- <laughs> that people are enjoying each other's company and stuff. However, 
I don't think anyone else needs to know. So I just giggle, especially yeah. if the, especially especially if because uh, I know there's a, a, quite a few of my male friends are kind of sat there, you know, and they, they've got they've got their messes or whatever, and they've gone on a day out or something, and they put up a photo. Girls sometimes as well put up these photos and go this one, and they could not look more bored. Uh, they could they could sit there and <laughs> yeah. go. I don't want to be here. Why are you taking an, another photo? And it just makes me laugh. It really makes me right. laugh because I, I'm, I'm all for taking photos and stuff with people. That's great. I mean, this room's covered in photos. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, mainly Frankie's fault, that one. To be fair, I'm kind of no looking fault. around the room and I feel like I'm being stared at by your girlfriend who isn't here. Uh, there aren't many photos <laughs> of just me. Well, there's no photos of me There up is here. one over there. There's no photos of me up here. Well, there's a photo of me where there should be a photo of you and I. But it's just a picture of me. Yeah. So when we did the No Mercy thing, which we talked about last week, I submitted a photo of myself and a photo of Chris to all the newspapers, yeah. and every single one ran with just me. Now, to be uh, fair, I have a photo. I'm holding a controller in front of a cabinet full of games consoles. I was just sat on the sofa <laughs> because it was <laughs> in like it was literally black. three. It was literally three minutes before I had to go to uni, so I didn't have much time to pose for a photo. Or anything like that. Otherwise, I would have made done something really elaborate, like gone into game and be like, "Hey, do you mind if I take a photo in front of all your games?" Yeah, can I go in the back and just take a picture in front of all the games, please? Thanks. In fact, you know what? In Wrexham, where I was at uni, they at one point they st- and I think they had it when we did No Mercy. Actually, they had a cardboard cutout of Tracer and everything from o- a character from well, Overwatch. You should have posed next to them. I would have done if I thought about it, and it wasn't. Nine in the morning, which is earlier than I usually wake up anyway, re- needing coffee. Oh, no. Well, I can't have a coffee, can I? Because I'm already late. Well, there you go. It says it all, doesn't it? It does say it all. So, yeah. Um, so if I follow first. I agree with that. I don't really care. I mean, it's <laughs> nice. Like, But the, the only thing I, s- I think of when I see stuff like that is, yeah, and I'm sat here. Thanks, bud. To be fair, though, I mate. I don't really care. At the same time, because obviously you might have put photos on Facebook, but... Obviously, recently, you've been away on quite a few holidays, like just I weekends have. away. I haven't got so one booked at the minute, which oh, is kind of sad. Oh, is that sad? Oh, is don't. it really? Don't. Because I've not been away anywhere don't. other than to Wrexham. And do you know what? That kind of stuff really irritates me. Um, <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh, it's, it's, nice that you're, it, it's, it's nice that you've got kind of the disposable income to do it. I want to be angry. <laughs> I want to be angry. <laughs> uh, no, but it is, it's, it's nice that people feel that they can. And obviously... We now have several platforms where people can post these photos. And obviously, they want to. Yeah, Insta. And I think, I think personally, cause because it doesn't bother me whether they do or not, uh-huh. they should just go for it. They do as they please, each I, to their own. I just don't really care. I know you don't. And also, you know, there's the th- there's a thing. I have a, like, don't get me wrong, I have a posh camera. I am actually qualified. Uh, yeah, there's no such thing as being qualified, but I, I took a course in photography and filmography and making stuff and working with cameras. I work with cameras daily. But I don't feel the need to take pictures and videos of everything. And I think there's something to be said for that because let's say, for example, I go to uh, watch Penn and Teller, okay, yes. which I did a couple of weeks ago, which I'll probably talk about at some point, but I went to go watch Penn and Teller. Uh, I did talk about it last week, didn't I? Did a little bit. It? Yeah. Uh, I went to go watch Penn and Teller. And uh, I didn't video the whole thing. I didn't take pictures. Firstly, I'm up in the upper circle of the bloody Hammersmith Apollo. And secondly, I want to remember that experience. I don't think photos will ever truly represent stuff. I mean, don't worry, I've got a stupid picture up there of me graduating. And I've got a picture of me flying on a zip wire in near Snowden. Doing a Wales. Boris. Doing a Boris, but more gracefully. It's the second <laughs> one that's not so graceful where I f- failed to catch the no, uh, sorry, I didn't make it to the end. I started rolling back. That's not a joke. <laughs> uh, wind caught me. And so, yeah, this whole thing was happening, blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, I don't feel the need to to do that. I don't feel the need to take pictures. Is that bad? No, it's not bad. But as I said, it's each to their own, mate. I think just because you don't feel the need to, other people do. They want to capture the memories. And I'm not... Cause I, but, yeah, people, a lot of people take a lot of photos on holiday and stuff. Fair play to them. It's their cool. However... You personally wouldn't. That's fine. I think what I'd like to see, and some people do do this, is like a curated selection okay. of stuff that was impressive. Seeing a picture of your hot dog legs, don't care. Seeing a picture of a beautiful mountain range, or seeing your pictures of like you doing something cool, different. Different. Like okay. say, for example, you're at the top of a mountain, 
Oh yeah, I want to see a picture. Well done to you. You got up the top of a mountain. Or you did what I did when I went up to Snowden, went on the train. But nonetheless, pictures of people on top of a mountain or like doing something really cool, like uh, Frankie and I went buggying, and those pictures are up. Um, because it's cool. People are going to go, huh, you did that, huh? That looks cool. You know, and it will create a conversation. That's what you want to do. Do you, do you know what? The, the, on this kind of topic, though, the ones that always make me laugh, or kind of maybe a little, not angry, but they kind of make me just go, oh, for God's sake, no one cares, is uh, is the ones where people have gone, you know, oh, where they go on holiday, go, oh, bog standard Monday morning. It's like, no, Tiffany, you work at Tesco's. You'll be back there <laughs> next week. Like, chill. Same for anybody. Anyway, it's like, no, chill. You go to work the same as everyone else. Now, I don't know if you work in a holiday resort, you must be a travel rep. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just like, and oh, there, bog standard life. Monday. It's like, no. For a travel rep, I used to, you know, I, I'm friends with a couple of travel reps. It's not a glamorous lifestyle. They, they're going around, going to all the hotels, all the they're working all day. They live there, but they're working all day. They don't have time to go out and enjoy it like you do. Their 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 job is to make you happy. Exactly. So you know, it's it doesn't make me angry. I'm just sat there going, ah, oh, no one cares. <laughs> just whispering very slowly to myself, especially if I'm on a bus next to an old lady. It really freaks her out. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Facebook photos aside, this podcast will be available on YouTube and on um, SoundCloud. SoundCloud and on the Apple Podcast app uh, and oh, iTunes yeah. for the PC and you can download it on SoundCloud so you can download it take it with you this will be available um, on every Thursday yes don't know what time it'll just I think it'll automatically do it because of the way we have to record this thing Aye. so yeah we do apologise for the technical problems we've had recording this yeah. one the stopping will, and starting we will get it fixed for next time we know what's not working Yes, indeed we do. And it means I'm going to have to go back to a sort of old school way of doing it because I was hoping to keep it all on a hard drive. What's happening basically is I'm doing it to a hard drive. The hard drive's not fast enough to keep up with us. Basically, an audition's recording it fast and the hard drive can write it. Yeah, That's the technical reason. So I'm going to have to go back to using the SSD on the laptop and then taking it off. So, yeah, going, going across. But that's, it's, it's a f- fixable. It's a so learning curve. Exactly, this which is which is what this is all about. This podcast <laughs> episode two. Now, Chris, I'm thinking about a new element that you have no idea oh. about. God, another one. Well, Mate. I think we should take it in alternate weeks because the last episode was called Pilot. Okay. Because it was the pilot. You have to, relevant to the episode, come up with a title for it and then next week I do it. Okay. So, I'm going to give you like 10 seconds to come up with a title. Off you go. Nine, um, eight, um, um, seven. Nez six, one wants five. to see your holiday photos. Nez one wants to see your holiday photos. Yeah. That's his, 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 his. Welcome to <laughs> Neswan Wants to See Your Holiday Photos. That will be, and I'm not joking, <laughs> that will be the title of the podcast. Do you know what? Is it bad? You'll know that about it before you hear this. Is it bad that I've already, after I've said that, the thumbnails <laughs> that I want to make on Photoshop no. have all popped into my head? No, we have to have a standard thumbnail. I know we have to have a standard thumbnail, mate, but I'm just saying the insane ideas that are popping into my head is really bad. Also, this is going to happen every week. Expect the thumbnail to change, by the way. At the minute, yeah. it's just white text with Curious Code Podcast, which yeah. I quite like, but eh, it's it might, it'll probably change at some point. Yeah. Anyway, uh, apologies for technical things. Chris has named the episode, Nez One Wants to See Your Holiday Photos. <laughs> is it Nez One Wants to See Your Holiday Photos or Nez One Wants to See Your Holiday Photos on Facebook? The first one. Nez One Wants to See Your Holiday Photos. That'll be... Uh, up. We'll see you next Thursday. Yes, we will. Um, when we'll be back with more. Don't know what's going to happen in the week. No. Nope. Uh, I tell you what we have got coming up. Uh, Chris and I have got a barbecue we're going to be attending yeah. on Saturday. And we'll tell you all about it, probably. Definitely. I'm sure we'll tell you all about it. Uh, well, not, all, not everything. So, yeah, closing thoughts on the podcast. Go see Baby Driver. Lego Batman movie is good. Crash Bandicoot. We'll probably report back to you next week. Listen to Gorillas. One. Listen to Gorillas. Um, and uh, don't do no chirps in, yeah? <laughs> no chirps, no in, chirps in for you. So, yes, we're nearly at an hour. That means I can stop for another time. I'll see you later. <laughs> this is Curious Code Podcast. I'm Martin William. Take it easy. And you got to say your name? Oh, for God's sake, you oh, you do this every time. I'm Martin William. And I'm suddenly going, uh. Should we try again? I'm yes. Martin William. I'm Chris Borden. You can find me on Twitter at Mark Willingham. And me at Real C Borden. There we go. That's how we end the show. That's it from us. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Ta-ta now. <laughs>